On this life flight, a man saves a child's life, but at what cost? I just think my lucky stars that he's even like this. A tourist's worst nightmare. My girlfriend was crying, oh no, what is happening? Three seconds it was, uh, the crash was happening. And a time critical mercy dash. I felt pretty sick to be honest. So goodbye. <laughs> but are they too late? So it's not looking too good. When emergency strike, time, distance, and the men and women of life flight can be the difference between life and death. This is Life Flight. Pilot Harry Stevenson and crewman Dave Greenberg are responding to a serious car crash on State Highway 2. Car v car, possibly three patients, possibly car on fire. 58-year-old Janice Taplin was turning into her driveway when a camper van struck the side of her vehicle and she has taken the full impact of the crash. Intensive care paramedic David Huntley is prepared for a worst-case scenario. Somebody like this, we could be looking at head injuries, chest, pelvis, abdomen. So a multiple trauma patient could have lots wrong with them. Air went Wellington landing at uh, Mount Bruce. David makes a quick assessment of the T-boned ute. The driver compartment damage suggests farmer Janice could have serious injuries. My name's David. G'day. G'day. Hello. Yeah? I what just time is today? Tuesday. Good, good. All day. Camper van driver Peter rounded the bend and saw Janice's car straddling the road. My girlfriend was crying, oh no, what is happening? And then one, one to three seconds it was, uh, the crash was happening. The recently engaged Belgian tourist went to help Janice, who was trapped in her ute. She was shouting for help, and then everything happened quite fast. So, uh... Meanwhile, the life flight fixed wing team are airborne and en route to a Burns victim. Carl Bradley saved a young child from a raging house fire but he is suffering extensive burns. Flight nurse Hayden Smith is concerned about the dangers Carl faces. Not sure the degree of the burns at the moment. Um, not until I get there that I'll be able to assess it. Visual landing. Landing in Palmerston North, the team waste no time in collecting Carl from hospital. The young man's pain is hard for Mum Angelina to bear. Stressed, worried, just some pain. Okay. <gasps> Berries. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Oh. Okay, we just need to get going. <laughs> Carl was using candles after his power was switched off for unpaid bills. He woke to the house in flames and rushed to save the three-year-old extended family member sleeping across the corridor. So I went in the room and grabbed the out of bed, smashed through the window and yeah, cut open my arm, put all my burns all over my back. And, Overcome, he handed the girl to her mother, but Carl was left with a severed artery. Yeah, watch all my blood just go like water fountain everywhere. Mm. All over the lawn and everywhere. Carl lost his home and all his possessions escaping the fire. The damaged skin is exposed to infection, and without intervention, Carl could suffer a full body shutdown. Set power. Power set. Back at the Mount Bruce camper van crash, cattle farmer Janice's pain is increasing as the adrenaline surge begins to wear off. How's the pain going, Janice? I'm getting a little bit upset around the sides. Righto, I'm going to get you out of here. We're going to carry you across to the helicopter. One, two, three, lift. The 58-year-old has run her farm solo for the last 23 years. Oh. 
be All better right. from here. One of her pigs is about to deliver a litter, but Janice is going to have to leave the care of the farm in the hands of Townie's sister, Anne. If you give me a piece of paper, I can write down what to, what to feed the stock. Ah, oh, we didn't give you a piece of paper for that reason. No, well, it'll just make it easier for you. Hold on, don't Just stop. remember, one bucket to the calves out here and one to them. It's practically a full-time job here for for two of us to take over and try and run the farm while she's incapacitated. And we don't know yet what what the injuries are. Yep, we're good for a start. Lifting. Uh, this is Janice, who's a 58-year-old lady who was involved in a high-speed motor vehicle accident. Got um, T-boned by a camper van on the open road. Ultimately, the, end of the res result from a T-bone accident is that some of the injuries could be quite severe and, and definitely life-threatening. The Westpac rescue chopper makes the two-hour road journey in 30 minutes, but Janice's condition is worsening. I'm cold. You're cold now. The Life Flight fixed wing team are approaching the capital, but Hayden is concerned with the amount of medication it is taking to control the pain from fire hero Carl's burns. He is obviously in a great deal of pain and that's been a bit of an issue. I think it's just important to keep him comfortable, not to worry so much um, about what's, what's ahead of him. There's a wind. Strong winds are causing difficulties for pilots Richard Fraser and Dion McMillan as they touch down at Wellington Airport, but Carl is still in acute pain. I'm really grateful that he's alive. After seeing the house today, you know, yeah, I just think my lucky star is that he's even like this. Carl faces surgery and months of rehabilitation, but the lapse in judgment that caused the house fire will stay with him for a long time. No candles, because they are not good. You need that like this. Oh. Meanwhile, Harry and crewman Julian Byrne are on a mission to save an unborn baby's life. Oh, good day, everyone. Welcome. At this stage, we uh, stopped track initially to the hospital for a staff pickup, and then we're down to Blenheim. Mother of three, Madeline Power, has gone into labour four months early, and her unborn child's life is at risk if it is born so prematurely. Madeline needs specialist care in Wellington. Midwife Catherine Lynch is concerned about the risks of the trip. The Life Flight team are in a race against the clock to help a young mother who has gone into premature labour. Uh, joining the finals for Warrior Hospital. Mother of three, Madeline needs specialist care in Wellington, but her partner James must stay behind to look after their other children. Pays my rocks, so leaving him behind. Just, I don't, yeah. I felt pretty sick, to be honest. It's not looking too good. The couple's youngest daughter, Olivia, was born 12 weeks premature and has suffered developmental problems ever since. She's pretty stressed out. You can imagine what, what she's feeling now um, with, with, with this baby being even younger than Olivia's birth, so she, she hasn't said too much. I've just, just tried to be there for her, be beside her as much as I can. At 24 weeks, the unborn baby has only an estimated 60% chance of surviving. But if the team can get to Wellington quickly, there is hope specialists might be able to stop the birth. Kiss her goodbye. Love you. Capital Zero One is uh, lifting off at uh, Wairau Hospital, vacating to the east on track, Wellington. Life Flight rushed Madeline to hospital for the birth of Olivia, but this time the stakes are even higher. She actually had a baby uh, about three years ago, um, born in Wellington, preterm, so there's a lot of things on the line, just quite anxious, but it's kind of late. The nerves are not helping, and Madeline's contractions are getting closer together. Meanwhile, the Life Flight fixed wing team are preparing to fly to Blenheim, where a teenage girl's life has turned upside down. Crewman Steve Reeve is coordinating the complicated mission. 
We're picking up a young girl who's recently been diagnosed with leukemia. I believe she's 16 years old. That's a pretty traumatic time for the whole family. Talented rower Isabel was diagnosed with the blood disease only hours ago, and immediate treatment is key to her survival. Flight nurse Hayden Smith is carrying blood on board should the young girl need emergency replacement during the flight. It's very important that children um, or anyone gets treatment straight away. Um, untreated leukaemia can be fatal. The fixed wing crew touch down and arrive at hospital to collect Isabel, who needs urgent chemotherapy in Christchurch. Dad Scott has rushed to be with his daughter. She's had an injury to her knee while she was doing gymnastics. It took a, a, a fair while to uh, come right, and so we took her to the doctor just to see what was going on, and um, then it all snowballed from there. It's still yeah, pretty upsetting. I really haven't got to grips with it yet. This morning, Isabel's biggest worry was her upcoming exams. Now everything is on hold as she begins the fight for her life. They just said that it is treatable. So, yeah. She was sort of going through a little bit of a, um, a phase of being upset and then, and then she comes right a bit. So, yeah, it's, again, I don't think it's set in totally yet to what's happening. Isabel is keeping up a brave face for the friends who comforted her as she learnt about the condition. I don't want to worry them. I don't want them to be feeling sad, so I just hope they just don't get worried. Mum Deborah is travelling with the plucky teenager. Bye. Just tell me. Over Cook Strait, efforts to stop Madeline's premature labour have failed, and the team are racing against the clock to get to Wellington before she gives birth. Maddie still having contractions. Not only is it painful, but it's also very stressful for her uh, with, with the background. The life flight team have brought Madeline to hospital where specialists will make one last attempt to halt the birth, but the contractions are becoming more intense. <laughs> Madeline has been on the life flight plane with her other premature child. The contraction passes and she has a heartfelt message for the men and women who have helped her family. Yeah, you rock. <laughs> Everyone needs to support Life Flight for things like this because you just don't realise that you need them until you really, really do. Camper crash victim Janice's pain levels are increasing and doctors need to discover the cause. Ready, steady, go. Janice has been T-boned by an oncoming camper van Dr. Raina Krog is concerned she might have multiple injuries. Wiggle the toes, wiggle the toes. The farmer needs a CT scan of her pelvis, but on the way to radiology, Janice's condition deteriorates. Trace. The rapid change is concerning nurse Jeanette Mason. Her oxygen saturation levels have dropped, which means her oxygen's not getting around her body effectively. Can we get it back into research? Yeah, sure. The drop could indicate Janice has a head injury in the area that controls her breathing. Uh, we're going to add on a CT head as well as the um, pelvis and abdo that we're doing. Meanwhile, Isabel and her mum, Deborah, must say a temporary goodbye to Dad Scott. The champion rower knows how important her parents will be in her battle with leukaemia. I, I can tell they're sad, but I think they're trying to be strong for me. I love them so much and I'm so glad that they're just doing everything to be with me. Arriving at the airport, the Life Flight team prepare Isabel for her next big challenge. So this is Sid, this is Isabel, this is Dan behind you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Pilots Sid Elwell and Dan Thompson are charged with getting Isabel to cancer specialists in Christchurch, where Mum Deborah will learn more about her daughter's fate. I think I just have to wait until I find out what's What's happening now? Yeah, yeah. Secure, checks out complete. 
Isabel is a courageous young woman, but there are hurdles ahead. Difficult to um, comprehend if she's fully under aware of her situation at the moment. I understand that she was initially upset. Um, it seems to have perked up a bit. Uh, but I don't think the gravity of the situation will fully hit her until she's in Christchurch. Back in Wellington, the life flight team are gearing up for a daring sea rescue. Crewman Julian Byrne is concerned time and the weather are against them. Apparently there's a kayaker who's gone out and he's uh, struggling in the conditions. Some torrential rain at the moment. There's a fair bit of lightning around as well um, and the sea state will be pretty big. Lightning at its worst can damage a helicopter's electrical and mechanical systems, but that must be weighed against the risk to the kayaker's life. Pilot Dean Herrick makes the call to fly in the challenging conditions. Control zero one ready. Reports have come in of a kayaker in trouble and floating out to sea as a severe thunderstorm approaches the coast. The life flight team are in a race against time to find him before night falls. Zealand, we'd like to track around the south coast now. Uh, should be there in around about one minute. Intensive care paramedic Hernan Holiday is suited up, ready to be winched down into the freezing water. The team are over the kayaker's last known position as police begin to coordinate the search. Heading southwest towards the South Island. Okay. You can cover up to two miles offshore at this time. We'll watch that. We'll do. The information I've got from the police at the moment is that it could be a couple of miles offshore, heading in a southwest direction. Now, it's pretty calm where we are at the moment, but if he gets himself caught in the Karori Rip, he could be going anywhere. Meanwhile, the fixed wing team touched down in Christchurch with 16-year-old Isabel and mum Deborah, who first raised the alarm about her daughter's leukaemia. That's a shock. Yeah. It's not something you would expect. She's, she's such, such a bright, bubbly, active girl. Isabel's grandmother died from the disease, but the 16-year-old is determined to beat the odds and pursue a medical career. A couple of weeks ago, I was looking at diagnostic radiology, and this week I'm looking into medical research. So it kind of changes, but even this helps me get an idea. This is always a plus. <laughs> Better hold on to the job. Watch out. <laughs> Hayden's happy to see the young girl nipping at his heels, but the optimistic teen has a hard road ahead. The treatment that you receive, depending on what it is, it could knock you for a six. You won't be there alone by yourself. There'll be others that are going through, either going through or have had gone through what you'll experience. So they'll be there to help support you. and They'll help you to get through it all. Isabel will need to muster all of her fighting spirit to make it through the coming months. But it's a challenge this 16-year-old is accepting. Thank you. See ya. Back in Cook Strait, the life flight team are battling fading light to find a kayaker who could be drifting out to sea. A little bit of a UE now and head back in a bit. Yeah, we don't have a huge amount of time out here to have a look for this, for this guy, so... Um... Uh, I would imagine maybe a uh, sort of 15 minute window from now and then it's just going to start to get a little bit too dangerous for us so uh, hopefully with a bit of luck uh, we'll pick something up shortly. This is piece of Island Bay here, he'll be getting swept right out to our right. Yeah exactly and he might even be on the island there. The police boat arrives to coordinate the search but the chances of finding the kayaker are diminishing by the minute. Uh, kayak was described as dark in colour. Uh, the occupant on board was wearing dark clothing similar to a wetsuit and no life jacket sighted over. Roger. Thank you. As if, you know, this time of night wasn't bad enough, he's gone out in a dark coloured kayak with no life jacket. So we've got the police out here at the moment, so fingers crossed we'll find something. Dean makes several more sweeps without success and a search of the coastline is the team's last option. Yeah, we've completed our uh, single head, sure one search, nothing sighted. We're losing too much light, we're going to have to head back to base, I'm afraid. Due to fading light and deteriorating weather, the team suspend the search, but the police boat will continue into the night in the hope they can find the missing kayaker. Cops, you are Wellington, landing my flight. 
if there's any message uh, to anyone who's going out on the water, particularly in Wellington, particularly on the Wellington South Coast at night, you know, uh, wear bright colours and a, and a life jacket and have a marine radio or something, you know. So if you, if you do get yourself into trouble, you can give us a call. Back in the Wellington Hospital CT room, camper van crash victim Janice's breathing difficulties stabilise. Dr Rayner makes an assessment of the resulting scans. I'm happy. Uh, radiologically, she's cleared. Yeah. Clear, clear in the brain. <laughs> clear in the brain, clear in the neck. Yeah. Chest is fine, abdomen is fine. The first person Janice wants to tell is sister Anne, who stayed behind to mind the animals while waiting for the outcome. Hello? They said everything looks good. They've scanned me. They've just about took me upside down and shaped me. Thank you, God, for <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that, sis. I really thought I was done this time. I'd like to thank the Life Flight guys. I've come off pretty lightly. Um, didn't think it was going to be that good, so... But those guys, they all need a pat on the back and do such a wonderful job. Janice spent the night in hospital and went home to help her pig give birth the next day. Despite ongoing pain, Janice is back working on the farm she loves. House fire hero Carl had extensive skin grafts and the burns on his back are healing. Carl has moved into a flat near his mother and has received an accolade for his heroic actions from local media. Medical intervention meant mum of three, Madeline, was able to carry her baby to full term and she gave birth to a healthy boy called Jack. Police identified the missing kayaker the next day and confirmed he had made it home safely. Doctors discovered Isabel had an extremely rare form of leukaemia. Three months after her diagnosis, she was undergoing aggressive chemotherapy and waiting on a bone marrow transplant.